Hi. Fancy meeting you here in this little old place. I'm Tish and this is Echo Echo. How are we everybody? <laughs> what's that? Uh what's happening? What's new? What's the what's the haps? Oh. Tell you what the haps are. Mabel is vomiting. Ooh, don't you hate that noise of a dog vomiting? I hope you can't hear it. Oh, Mabel. Start to the video. Are you okay? Oh, honey. I tell you what, last night. So, I have a nice set of sheets that I bought. Like, beautiful linen sheets. And it was time to change the sheets. I changed them and I went outside. And it was like, I was just about to go to bed. Uh, and... I think Wilbur peed on the fresh sheets. Now, they have not done that in so long, you know? Like, they know where to go. And I have pee pads just in case as well. And in the bed. Oh, I was fuming. I was fuming. Fuming. Oh, anyway, I had to change the sheets a second time. And now I've got a whole bunch of sheets to wash. Um, you're having a rest now. So I, I've forgiven them, but gee, I was annoyed last night. I'm like, go away. Go away, you're not my friend. Anyway, what we are here to do today, uh, we, I <clears throat> checked back in on an old favesy, uh, which is what I was going to do a whole video of checking in on the old favesies, but Veronica Bay has real estate, and it's so funny, the thing that she was uh, trying to sell, the house, she was clearly marketing it to top leaders in an MLM because she said, this is for an entrepreneur who wants to host events and retreats in the house and it's got eight bedrooms and this, da, 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 and it's right on the, on the, um, like it's in Miami. Oh, well, it's in Florida, but it's in one of the places that has like, is on water. Uh, I don't know what they're called, but. Yeah, and it's clear that she was like, but do you know what? She didn't make money because she was a good salesperson. She made money because she had a team. So it's going to be really interesting to see how she goes at this because she pretty much thinks that she can do anything. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we And then I checked in on Lily Zaramba. I was thinking about checking in on Tracy, remember her? She's gone to Alaska. She's selling Zip Slim and not with Elamia or Awakened anymore. She bought, she had the NFT as a header, you know. Uh, and of course, I'm still covering Awakened. I just wanted to take a bit of a break and, and try to cover someone new. Uh, I'd like to do, if you've got anyone to send, if you go to my About page or tab, you can get my email, so send me an email, or hit me up on Instagram. It's echo echo tish x at Instagram. That's changed, but that's what it is now. Like I changed it to that because it had YT there for YouTube. Except YT is also a way of um, saying white w h i t e on social media because sometimes when you use the w h i t e Spelling of white, when you're talking about race relations, uh, people of colour can get, like, flagged, shadow banned, that sort of stuff. Is shadow banning even real? Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we... So, then that led me to Lily Zaremba. Oh, the OG, Lily. Lily, Lily. And her Instagram was kind of... It, there was not much on there, I have to say. Uh, she thinks she's a model. I think that's it. She doesn't, she's very, it's all about photo shoots for her. She just has photo shoots. That's, that's what she does. If I, if you didn't know that she was a network marketer, you would think that she was an influencer and she kind of is, kind of, but you would think she's a model as well because she doesn't model for anyone. So I believe she's, she's too short. Now, if you're a famous person, you can be a short model, but. Not if you're not famous, you know. Um, speaking as a short queen, 
Yeah, that's the only reason why I can't be a model. Not that I'm 45. Am I 45 this year? Hang on. 2023. I am. I thought I was going to be 46. Hang on. I get 46. <laughs> I am really bad at my birthday, okay? I don't really celebrate it. It's not special to me. So, yeah. Uh, it's coming up soon, but I'm going to be 46. Holy shit. God damn. I'm old. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, looking at Lily Zaremba's little Instagram. Little Instagram. <laughs> she's got the blue tick. So, she's very happy with her. And whatever. And she had a image from her speaking at the Most Powerful Women in Network Marketing with Marina Worry, who is Eric Worry's wife. It is a women's, women's event. And I know that Lily spoke. I think Jessie Lee Ward spoke. I can't remember when it was. I got it off Facebook. Let's have a look. So it was from... Oh, is there a part two? Only the first. Oh. It's only doing the first. Uh -huh. Gosh, where is that? 43 weeks ago? 43 weeks ago? Was that when it was? 2022. Oh, when was she? When was the, this one? Oh, they haven't had it yet. Okay, well, this is last year's. Why is Lily putting that on her socials then? Because I'll show you what I'm looking at. So March 9th. Oh, it's a throwback. Oh, she fooled me. Okay, that's all right. I haven't watched this. It will be okay. All right. Let's do it. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada at Worry Studios. This is the most powerful woman in network marketing. Are you ready? Please help me welcome to the stage your MC and host for the weekend, the one and only Eric Worry. Hello, 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 hello. How you doing? Um, what? Women? Women? Women. I thought Marina would be hosting this, Eric's wife, but... Okay. Good to see you all. Hello, everybody at home. Our Platinums, our Seekers, our home people. Hey, Sarah, how's it going? What's up, Tahara? What's up, Susan, Nicole? Asthma. Did I get that right? I got it right? All right. Good to see you. How you doing? You guys good? All right. Well, we have this like intimate audience here in the. <laughs> this isn't gonna be like Max thing where, uh, they had the canned laughter and the canned crowd. Hmm. Hmm. At least there's a small audience. Yeah. God, they live for that first name call out, don't they? Or you know, Jesse Lee does the full name call out, but yeah. Who cares? Crowd, in addition to the people for connected from all over the world. I'm excited to, it, it's funny. We're hosting the most powerful women in network marketing. First person you see is a guy. So it's a little weird, but mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. I'm mostly going to get out of the way. I'm just going to act as host, guide you through, um, introduce different speakers. Um, Couldn't Marina do that? Be your little MC. Uh, Marina has worked very, very hard to prepare an incredible event for all of you here in person. The very kind of exclusive crowd here in person. Give yourselves a round of applause. And then people connected from 100 different countries around the world. It's great to see you. If Those of you who are at home, if you're excited, put a number one into the comments. Let me see if you're excited for this. You ready for this? I am excited. All right, fantastic. You're going to hear from Marina in just a minute, but before we do that, I just want to give you a little bit of um, some, some recommendations on how to make the most out of this event, okay? How do you make the most hey. out of this event? Number Get one, off. make a commitment right now Get off, stupid man. to be present. 
We, are, we live in a world where all of our technology is teaching us not to be present, right? Yeah, we're, we're so, like, how many screens do you have on when you... Is that talking about me? I'm making a prop. I'm making a prop for my nine to five, my real job. So, is it, is it going to be a book? If you have the television on at home. You know, is it more than one? How many is more than one screen? Two. You got your phone, you got your... Just two. You got your... Except that I have two things on one of the screens and then one thing on a third screen. So, but I'm not looking at anything else. Okay, promise. Your laptop, you got your tablet. You got all different kinds of things going on while the movie is happening. You know what I mean? Um, so it's easy for technology to kind of distract us from what could happen. And what you're going to get over the course of this three days is ideas, strategies. And any one of these strategies can double your business in the next 12 months. Any one. And there's going to be dozens and dozens, probably hundreds of strategies that if you miss it, it flies over your head, it's gone, you did, you're not able to take advantage of it. Now, I'm not saying you're going to have to implement hundreds of strategies as you leave here. That might feel a little bit overwhelming. But what if you, you absorbed hundreds of strategies and you picked three? that would have a huge impact for you and your business. It's going to be different for different organizations. Organizations in hypergrowth, organizations in stable situations, organizations in decline, organizations in transition. You know, who knows what it's going to be for you? For you, it might be your own limiting beliefs keeping you at a smaller level than you're capable of being. Who knows what it's going to be for you? But make sure that you capture the information because this is going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. Those of you here in person, Plug in. When your mind is full, keep writing. Keep taking notes. What I learned a long time ago, here's one, one trap that happens sometimes at events like this, is somebody comes up with a strategy and you go, oh, that one's for me. And your mind checks out of the event for the next three hours because you're masterminding what you're going to do with that one strategy in your head. You know, you're, you're moving six months into the future. That's, you can have time for that. But don't miss the other strategy, because there might be one that's even better. There, there might be one that's even more timely for you right now. Marina's going to talk to you in a moment about how important it is, this moment in time, how important it is in network marketing history. But make sure that you're present, number one. Number two, play full out. Play all in. All in. If there's an exercise, don't go to the bathroom and hide. If we send you into a breakout room to go share, don't turn your camera off and just say, you know, I'm going to be my introverted self. We're in the business of talking to people. And if we can't eat, eat, at least talk to each other. Why? I don't, that's weird. I've never heard them sort of do breakout room activity sort of thing. How would they do that with thousands of people watching? That's weird. Hmm. But also, like, he said he was just here to MC, and he's still... He is telling people what to do, obviously. Like he's telling you how to do things. Other, that might be a problem. You're never going to have a friendlier group ever to be able to share real issues with than this group. So be willing to engage all out. If there's an activity, do the activity. If we ask you to do some exercise, do the exercise. If we ask you to share, then share. If we ask you to share some ahas, and I'm going to be doing that during the, over the course of the three days, then share those. Think about during, you know, what's one thing? The other thing, I got to give you one more tip. One more tip when it comes to absorbing all this information, because it's like I told you, it's a lot. To absorb all this information, take your notes, but after every speaker, look for one thing. One thing, and put a star next to that one thing. Okay, so we've got to write down everything and then implement three things. And then everything, we, when our head's full, we have to keep on writing. We have to show up whenever we can't go to the bathroom. And after each speech, we have to put a star on something. Is this meant to be enjoyable? It's a lot to do, you know? Oh, man, I'd love to see some of these notebooks. I'm not taking notes, but, yeah, interesting. Okay? Not two things, not three things, not eight things. There's too many things. Just one. 
because there's going to be dozens of those. And at the end, three days from now, you know, another two days after today, you're going to have a list of those things. And from there, you can create a game plan. That's a way for you. Here's what I don't want. What I don't want is you have a big notebook, and it's so much that you're too busy to even have time to go absorb it. You said to write down, even if you, if you had to keep writing notes. So, of course, you're going to fill a notebook up. What's with the logo, too, with the boxing gloves and the angel wings? Well, they don't have to be angel wings. They're just wings, dish. You know, like, it's kind of like, it looks kind of like those cringy bum- bumper stickers that are like, uh, zero to 100 kilometers to bitch, or, you know, like, <laughs> I, I can't think of anything. It's like, uh, 1% sweet angel, 90% devil, or, you know, like, just weird, cringy, pick me bumper stickers. At all. Sometimes these events can create a, a bigger to-do list than your anxiety can handle, okay? So I want to help you kind of manage that. Who, who's ready to manage that, all right? And who's proud of themselves for being here? Give yourselves a round of applause. You proud of yourself for being here? All right. Um, last thing I will tell you is show up. Every session, be here, plug in. When I did, we, we did an accelerator program the early part of this year where we did a 90-day run. How interesting that he is mentioning Accelerator Program because um, this was obviously over 43 weeks ago. So Jessie Lee hadn't come out with her coaching program then. Hmm. But this is where she formulated it. Hmm. And I just told everybody, turn your brain off, show up every day, and do the work. And I... My encouragement to them was, pretend like you're on the North Pole. If you're on the North Pole with no cell access and all you had to do was work, no family could reach you, no friends could reach you, you were unavailable, right? Do your best right now. Now, you might have not already pre-negotiated with your family in order to be able to have a no-distraction weekend, but I'm going to encourage you. I heard him say this at GoPro as well, so... That would be really annoying if you come to all his events and he tells you the same thing. Before the lunch break here, whatever that time that is for you, that you go have a quick negotiation with the family and say, listen, I'm going to be on the North Pole until Sunday. You need to leave me alone. Give me space. Bring me food. Take care of the drama. Take care of the stuff. But I do network marketing so that I can be home with my babies. Because for some of you at home, here's what's going to happen. How many of you have kids? Raise your hands. How many of you find it fascinating that as soon as you get on a Zoom or a business call, that they absolutely go nutso, crazy, screaming, loud, fighting, drama, everywhere? Show of hands. Anybody? And then as soon as you get off your Zoom, quiet. You get on another one, they go crazy again, right? They're trying to get your attention. So here's all I'm going to tell you. You need to do a little negotiating and say, look, mama's working. Give mama some space. Obviously, they're desperate for attention. That's something you should deal with instead of saying mama's working, which I've heard a lot of times. And I would encourage you to do one more thing. Ask them for their support. Say, if you see mama getting distracted. Toddler, excuse me. I would like your support in watching this Zoom. Can we do that today? Little Brayden? Little Brayton? Little Ashlyn winner? Can we give mamas? I really need your support on this. Yeah, sure, that's going to work. You say, hey, mama, back to work for these three days. Hey, mama, back to work. Hey, mama, we we got lunch. We got dinner. We're fine. Get back in your room go do what you need to do. Who's willing to do that? Put a number three in the comments. Who's willing to do that? All right? Okay, listen. I've got a lot of people to introduce and a lot of stuff to do, but I'm mostly going to get out of the way. And I want to introduce and I want... He has been talking for 12 minutes. That's a fair chunk. I want those in person to show their love and show their appreciation and everybody at home to do the same thing. Uh, for the most powerful woman in my life, and the person who's 
created not only Worry Studios, but the most powerful women in network marketing for the eighth year. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Marina Worry. <laughs> I think if I was to ever get married, first I was like, who are you? Why? What? They're standing. Oh, cringe. Uh, what? Oh, is she going to talk for 40 minutes? Because she's got 40 minutes up there. It's 9 a.m. Jesus. Why are they pumping the music? Uh, why? What was going to say? If I married somebody and, like, I had to become this person and I have to dance, deal breaker. No, thanks. Um, I'm not dancing on a stage for anyone. Okay. I don't care how many Louis Vuitton bags you buy me. No, thank you. This is so exciting. I mean, seriously, because... First of all, welcome, welcome to everybody watching at home, everybody's watching in the studio, because uh, it's already second year that we've been doing our events in the Worry Studios, and uh, this is the first time at our event we have the live audience, so I'm super excited about that. Yay! <laughs> and, of course, all of you guys at home, first of all, I want to congratulate you for, you know, dedicating your time, uh, giving us these three days out of your busy lives. I know it was a sacrifice for some of you, I know... Uh, you had to figure out the time, you had to figure out the money, you had to organize the babysitters and everything else. So congratulations for being here, and I promise you it's going to be three life-changing days. And I just want to get started. We've got to make people feel valued. This is love bombing, okay? You're just by turning up, you're doing something. So then even if you don't accomplish anything after this, you, or even if you haven't achieved anything yet, you still feel like, I did something. I, I showed up today. And that's what Erica asked them to do. You've got to show up. It doesn't make your business successful just to watch these things because there's only one way to win at network, at network marketing, and that's to recruit. started right away because, um, you know, we live in a very interesting world right now. And one of the biggest shifts that it's happening, uh, I think, and probably all of you already can feel it, the economics worldwide are changing. And yes, we're going to talk about women. Yes, because it's the most powerful women in network marketing event, and it's our eighth annual event. But before we go into all of that, yes, give yourself a round of applause, especially if you've been with us from the beginning. So when we want to talk about the women and everything else, but before we do that, I want to give you a little bit of a lay of the land where we are today as the society, as the profession. Uh, how many of you would like to know that? Put some uh, fives in the comments. I would like to see, okay, okay, some of you are interested, great. So here's the thing. As you guys know, the pandemic was something that nobody could plan, nobody didn't know what to do with that. And when it happened two years ago, a little bit over than that, uh, the whole world got caught on, you know, at a standstill. We didn't know what to do, we didn't know what's gonna happen, uh, everybody was scared. Uh, there were no cure at that time. Uh, we, we were genuinely worried. There's no cure now. There's just a vaccine. About our lives, our safety, our health, our loved ones. And as we all know, a lot of shifts started happening in an economy because the world, the entire world got shut down and that actually never ever happened before. The entire world stopped. And millions and actually hundreds of millions of people worldwide lost their jobs. Tens of thousands of millions, uh, tens of millions uh, small business owners closed their doors and a lot of them for forever. And we found ourselves in a, such a strange time where a lot of the society didn't know what to do, right? Um, people were worried not just about their health, but also about their financial survival. Especially for moms, for women, it's really important to be able to, you know, provide the roof of our heads and feed our kids. It's important for parents to do that not just women and again uh then when we're talking about when i talk about women i'm including people with uteruses i'm including anyone who's femme presenting who identifies as a woman i don't think that they'll be as inclusive with their language here but i don't think they're going to go out of their way to be transphobic either we'll see <laughs>
We make sure that we have that security, and unfortunately, all of that disappeared pretty much overnight. And we know that what's happening in the world, and right now I feel like the world is going through some crazy times. There are wars happening. Some of you know that I'm originally from Ukraine, and my home country right now is defending their territories, fighting for their, their lives, fighting for their freedoms. And they were just like you and I. One day, girls were talking about their date nights, what they're going to wear, what they're going to cook for dinner. And next morning, they were sitting in the bunkers and covering their kids with their bodies, trying to protect them. So realizing that, unfortunately, the unstable times that we're all going through, we need to understand, first of all, the biggest key is the awareness. The biggest key is to recognize where we are as a society. And some of you are probably thinking, like, okay, come on, I just came here for the women's event. I just want to know about women. I just want to know about network marketing, how to build a business. But here's the thing. First of all, we need to be aware of what is happening around us, what is happening in the world, what is happening in the world. Why is that? I think she's going to say we need to know what's happening because then we can use it to our advantage to recruit, to get people into the business. Wide economy because we all dependent on it and how our profession specifically is affected by it. So with pandemic, different wars, different things that were happening, when all the businesses got shut down, what happened? People who could not go to their jobs, to their cubicles, what they started doing they started doing, looking for different options, right? Because the only opportunity we all had was to work from home. As of course, inside of network marketing, we kind of like used to it, we know. No, that wasn't the only option. There are essential workers. There are essential workers. I'm an essential worker. <laughs> How things work, we can do business from home, we can do everything on computer, as long as we have the internet connection, we're golden. But the whole world had to learn this new muscle how to operate on Zooms. Employers were going through a tough time learning that employees actually can work from home and perform, because that was the biggest fear for everybody. When people go home, will they perform? When people... Uh, at the beginning, when we, last year, we had to start two weeks early, I mean, two, two weeks later, because um, there was a bit of an outbreak in Queensland, and we were not allowed to work from home because uh, our boss at the time said they didn't trust that we would work at home. People go and they're not sitting under your personal supervision day in and day out. Will this stuff happen? Will the job be done? And to their own surprise, they learned, yes, it works. It happens. And at the same time, what happened to the employees? Yes, of course, at the beginning, nobody could go to work because everything was shut down. But they started liking it. They're just like, hmm, you know what? It's actually kind of cool. I can spend some time with my family. I can finally feed my kids breakfast, my husband breakfast, have lunch, go do whatever I feel I need to do as a woman. I don't have to sit in the traffic. I don't have to do all kinds of nonsense. I don't have to sit in the cubicle. Sometimes with people I do not necessarily like. So what happened, they realized that, you know what? It's actually kind of cool, and I can get used to it. And... The entire workforce learned something different and something new. When at the beginning it was, you know, do I have dental insurance? What kind of benefits you give me when you hire me? Now the new benefit became, can I work from home? Can I work from home? Can I stay at home and do my business and do my job from home? And that became also like a new requirement. So every time you offer people a job, their first question, can I work from home? And if the answer is not, they're looking for some other options. So guess who? I mean, not everybody. And during, and I mean, we're still in the pandemic, but during the height of quarantining, yeah, people might have been doing that, but not now, you know, where you can go to work. Had pretty much everything the entire workforce wanted. Our profession, network marketing, because you can work from home, you can work around your schedule, you can take care of your family, you can take care of your kids, do it on your terms and still make money. That's a pile of shit because you have to, you, if you were in a normal job that wor is working from home, you get paid for your hours. In network marketing, you don't. You get paid for sales and you get paid for recruiting. And that is a different skill set than, say, data entry or customer service or whatever it is. If you are not somebody who enjoys sales, then network marketing is not for you. And I hated sales. I've always hated sales. 
I always think if people want something, they will buy it. Uh, I worked at like blockbuster, a blockbuster type franchise in Australia called Video Easy and I didn't want to upsell them any Coke because the Coke was $5 and you could go somewhere else and get it for $4 or $3. You know, like who wants to buy my expensive Coke? I'm not going to say, you know, like it's dumb. So I just, I'm, I suppose I'm not a capitalist. <laughs> so as a profession overall, we benefited tremendously. Not everybody, not everybody. There were several companies that, um, the companies specifically who were affected because of their infrastructure was shut down, like travel companies, right? There were no ways to travel. There were no ways to fly anywhere. Cruise lines, all that kind of stuff, hotel businesses, all of that got shut down and got affected the most. So those companies didn't do well during the pandemic. But everybody else who had any kind of service or any kind of wellness product, they went through the roof. And we took it a little crazy, you know. As and what does that... Uh... What does that graph look like now? Uh, because if it's anything like the Monate one, it's boot and then boot. Because people joined, they realized what it was, and then they left. Especially wellness companies, and I'm sure some of you remember that. No matter what kind of product you had to consume inside, to put on your body, lotion, potion, and to clean your house, pretty much every product all of a sudden was curing COVID or preventing it. And we got some slaps in our hands because the FTC was like, uh, uh, no, 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 don't, don't do that. You cannot do that. Doterra? I'm looking at you, Doterra. <laughs> Those claims, that's just not okay. So we had to learn, it's like, okay, you need to present. I'm glad to hear that saying this. That's good. I think that it's, um, I think it's a good message to come from somebody with such influence. She is a major influence in the... MLM world um, and to hear it from her I think that that would be quite powerful so yeah this is a good message well done on this one however <laughs> the rest and our opportunity in a professional way in the way that actually is true and guess what we don't need to sugarcoat it we do not need to sugarcoat it because we do have the gift between our products our services and the compensation structure that is attached to it we do have the gift inside of network marketing because people can come to our profession with no background or special talent or special requirement. No special education is necessary. You can be skinny, tall, fat, short, any color of skin, any hair color, any length of nails, whatever the heck you like, right? And this profession is going to treat you just exactly the same. Oh, I think there's some companies that have some similar characteristics. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a picture to show you this. Also, I was looking for a paparazzi person, and um, so many women have, and I looked up the hashtag paparazzi accessories. I think on Instagram, so many women of color. It was disturbing <clears throat> because. You know, I I just think somebody from a minority who's already disadvantaged by legislation. <laughs> I'm trying to. Say, it's like um, it's like poverty. You know, like where where it is. Oh, what's wrong with me? Why can't I? Mm -hmm. So, don't worry about that. Just cut that out, Tish. Cut it out. 22, 39. Uh, all right, let's keep going. And you know what is another cool thing that we often forget? As women, we make the same amount of money as men. Yes, this is something that is deserved a big recognition because... Yes, but who are the CEOs of that so who are the ceos in this particular like companies who gets the biggest bucks there the women or the men i believe it's the men all right so let's have a look at this the main eight top leaders white 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 women 
conventionally attractive, quite thin, can't see anyone with a really big body there. Uh, we may have Latina, we may have some South American ladies, but that's, that's white, so don't tell me there's diversity in there. Hmm. It is not the same thing. It's not the same thing in the corporate America. In the corporate America, there is one compensation structure for women and another compensation structure for men. And God forbid you are different skin color or different ethnicity than the white Caucasian. Because as a Latina, you're going to get paid less. As a black woman, you're going to get paid less. And you know what's crazy? You're still paying the same money for the education. Because you're black, they're not charging you less for college. Because you're Latina, they're not charging you less or you don't have to go less amount of years for, to school to learn that specific skill set. They're charging you exactly the same amount of money. You have to jump through the same hoops and yet still, you're going to get paid way less money. In okay. But what are you going to do about it? Because this is not the answer. Network marketing isn't the answer. 1% of people are going to be successful to a point of making enough money to live. Okay, so you don't have the answer either. It's a virtue signaling because it's like, well, what are you going to do about it? Because you don't have the answer. Side of network marketing, we don't have this. So when you talk to anybody, when you present your opportunity, don't forget that. It's a big, big, big thing, especially for women. So back to our economy, right? So economy was going down, but network marketing going on the rise because the entire new system that was created, the entire new normal that we learn how to live with, with became something that benefited our profession tremendously. And guess what started happening? We, a lot of companies and a lot of people started making a lot of money, right? They were making a lot of money before that. But also, the other thing that you were cashing in on was fear. So, because people could get PPP loans, they could get a variety of assistance, you know, and you made people scared. So you definitely played on people's fears of fear of getting COVID, fear of not having enough money and that sort of thing. So I think that's really shitty and it's not something to be celebrated. We had a huge influx of people coming into our business and not just as customers, but as distributors or builders, right? The and in the reality, they were not necessarily builders. They just wanted to make money. They didn't necessarily want to learn the profession. They didn't necessarily want to learn the skills. They just wanted to make money. They needed money like oxygen because they didn't have any way or any opportunity to make money to survive. Yeah, builders. So that means recruiting. All right. So you're admitting that the builders wanted money and that's how you get the big money. That's how you get money. Building. Recruiting. Thank you for confirming. Right? Our economy, especially in the United States, we were printing money faster than we could. We actually printed more money in the last two years than mm -hmm. in our pretty much entire history. And now we're paying the price of that situation, right? Yes, at that time it was necessary. Yes. This is a talking point that has been repeated after she said this. Maybe she didn't say it originally, but this is one that they've been playing on. This is fear, again, fear of rising prices, inflation, etc. So how is this positive? It's not. That's a rhetorical question. Yes, at that time, those uh, extra checks for the families and extra money for the businesses to keep them afloat were necessary, where were survival critical. But right now, we are all paying the price for it. And you already can see it everywhere. You can see it when you go fill up your car because the gas prices are through the roof. If you need to buy a home, Good luck with that one. Right now, the real estate is an all-time high. Everything is an all-time high. People are overpaying the asking price for a home. If you want to buy a car, you need to pay extra for what is the asking price. I've never seen anything like this. Do you have a source for that? Because that sounds like something that maybe is happening, but it's not happening for you because you've spent this time fear-mongering. And again, we've got more fear. You know, like the gas pumps. All of them were banging on about the gas pumps. Uh, you know, like, this is not positive. This is negative. This is trying to make people scared. And that's what they did. That's what they did at the time, too. It's all about fear and maybe making people afraid that they won't get back. And 
you know, like a lot of these people, we hear them talking about, you know, like this and this or that. And really what they were doing, what they are trying to do is maintain their lifestyle without sacrificing their lifestyle. Do you know what I mean? So uh, we have the two cars, the big cars, etc. Yeah, we could downsize and then, you know, bring the mortgage down, go to something that's only got two bathrooms, but we don't want that. We want all the kids to have their own bathrooms, you know, like so many. Like Erica Auckland. Is that? No, Erica. Ju- Julie Jo did a video about her and she's saying how she's relaunching her whole business which just means that she's using a different template on Canva. But um, she talked about how she joined Monate so that she could buy organic food. Uh, Privilege, right there. So, you know, like so many of these people I see had good quality of life, but they didn't want to downsize. And that's why they joined. And it's, you know, worked out well for those at the top. I'm sure it didn't work out well for everyone, though. I've never seen that you need to pay 20, 30, 50, 100,000 sometimes extra for the car asking price. This is insane. What fucking cars are you buying? What the f- What are you talking about? What does that even mean? Who's buying 100 grand cars at the moment? That's that's a bit of privilege as well. Insane. This is insane. And guess what? Unfortunately, this is just the beginning. You know, the, some of you watched the movie um, Game of Thrones. I actually watched just a few episodes and my husband and my son still thinking that I'm crazy, that I missed the big thing. But one phrase I know from that movie, winter is coming, right? Winter is coming. And I don't want to scare you all to death because I can already see, like in some of you eyes, like, <gasps> what is she talking about? What is going on here? Just give me something exciting. Tell me something good. Well, here's the thing. It's going to be okay, all right? I'm just going to give you the spoiler alert. We're going to be fine. We're going to survive, right? And this is exactly what is the theme of this event because through these three days, I put all the amazing speakers and the content specifically in the way, not just to scare you to death, but to actually give you the roadmap how we can come out of this stronger as women. This was, uh, that was absolutely to scare everyone. I stopped it five times to say it was fear-mongering. Like, as the community, as the profession, and as the society. So yes, the winter is coming, and I'm not going to leave you hanging in there. I'm going to give you skills, tools, ideas necessary so you can come out as a victor out of three days and out of this season. But you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared. You need to know what's coming so you can brace and get ready for it. So you can create a game plan necessary to recognize what is coming and what is the best way to handle it, right? Because the biggest fear in the world is change. The biggest thing that we're all afraid, yes, some of them, oh, the fear of spiders, the fear of sharks, the fear of public speaking. Yes, 61% of the population of the world is petrified of public speaking. And this is considered to be the highest fear in the world, right? But in my personal opinion, they forgot the most important thing, and this is change. It's nine. So you quoted statistics without a source and then said that you think that it's a different fear, fear of change. Uh, I'm going to need a source on that one. I don't think, like, people fear. Like, why are we talking about fear? You're, it's to manipulate too. People fear change and they need to find, you know, uh, strength in discomfort and to get over, you know, like, that's where you'll overcome things in that discomfort. 9.9% of the population is petrified of change. Because it's unknown. It's something that we never experienced. It's something that we don't know what's going to happen. So, yes, Yolanda said the preparation is key. Exactly. The preparation is key. We need to be understanding where we're going and we need to prepare for it. That picture is not her. That is a different person to s- who's standing on stage there. So, like I said, our profession benefited tremendously. And this is what happened. And I'll show you in this very simple graph. So... There is that bottom line is time, right? Okay, so um, for my geeks out there, um, a graph is supposed to have a what? A message We need a title. Where's this come from? 
what's the source of that? We'll see where he goes. And some of you already seen these graphs, but I'll actually show you the new spin on it. So the bottom line is time, and the uh, vertical is money, right? Whatever the currency you are, whatever you're from, it can be dollars, euros, whatever, you, whatever it makes sense for you, right? So it's money. And guess what happened? Like I said, majority of the companies created a huge revenue, right? The revenue went through the roof. And guess what happened during that time? First of all, everybody thought they're geniuses, right? Everybody thought I was like, hey, I cracked the code of network marketing. You don't tell me what to do. You don't tell me how to build this business. I got this. You know, I've been here for five minutes and I already cracked the code. I got this, right? So people were making more. There's no code. Oh, no, I got glue on the space bar. Um, there's no code. It's all, it's, it's one thing. thing. Sorry. <laughs> but also, what do you mean revenue over time? How much time? Years, months. This is confusing. They, first of all, they knew what to do with. And the most importantly, they had no clue how they made it happen. Because they benefited being in the right place at the right time. And I'll give you a little secret. Sometimes your check may take a lucky jump. And guess what? If you do not become the level of the person who is capable of creating and generating that kind of an income and that kind of a leader who understands what it takes to generate that kind of an income, your income will come down to the level of the person and the leader you are. And that's exactly what is happening inside of our profession today. Ooh, it's your fault. Didn't you know? It's your fault. What you get paid is your own fault. It's the same old story that we've heard a million times. You work if it works if you work it. Oh, I need that on the bingo card. You didn't work it, so you didn't make any money. Uh, open mouth, open business. It's all these platitudes and sayings and blah, 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 blah. It's the same old story. It's the victim blaming for me. I think I can take a pause because I would like to go and get some lunch. So we'll take a pause. I'll hopefully be finished my book soon. It's looking good. Like it's meant to look like pages. Yeah, I think it's going to look good. Why didn't I just use a real book? I don't know. <laughs> a lot of Frida's here. Frida's here. Say hello. 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 She's trying to see if there's something she can eat up here. But there's not. Hey. Let me flip your ears over. Baby, baby. Wilma's down here. Me, mm, cutie pie. All right. The buns are on, the pork buns. No, no, looking not good now. So we'll go out and check the buns. Look at her teeth. Look at her teeth. <laughs> no. All right. I'll hop down now. Let's keep going. People started making a lot of money without having a single clue how that happened without prospecting anybody for real, without learning how to find people to talk to, because you didn't have to find people to talk to. They were finding you. They were begging to join you because they were starving. They Oh, the fish were jumping in the boats. I think uh, I heard the Monate people say that one. Yeah, they were. Because of the way you were all marketing too, as being like the saviors, you know, you can work from home. I work from home. Blah, 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 blah. I, I wasn't into anti-MLM during pandemic, was I? I was just starting to because I remember watching some videos where the Huns were saying, you know, like, use your stimulus check to get the big kit or whatever. So I think I was just on the tail end of it, of where they were heavily using it to recruit and sell. So, yeah, interesting. Needed money for survival. They were finding you. So you didn't have to develop the skill finding prospects. Are you kidding me? You didn't have to onboard them. You didn't have to teach them because they were continuing to do the same exact thing that everybody else. Just signing everybody up and off you go. 
right? And you'll build a business. We didn't have to teach people how to present. Nobody was asking like, oh, what's the presentation? What should I say? How do I do live? Teach me, teach me. Nobody was asking any of that. Everybody right, just right? like turned on the camera. It's like, hey, come join my business. Spamming the social media, the crap out of it, the whole thing, right? And it worked. Were they? Were they not asking? I'm sure there would have been people saying, you know, like, how do I do this? Surely. It worked for a season. So we created a lot of earners. But there is a big, big, big difference. The difference between the earner and a leader. Just because you're making money, it does not make you a leader. This is the biggest definition we all need to understand as a professional. Uh, have you met network marketers? Because they... They do not play by that rule. They are very obnoxiously like, I am the, earning the most money, so therefore, therefore, and so are the same, same a synonym, sorry. <laughs> uh, I know the most about this because I made the most money from it. Like every network marketer, <laughs> the highest in the company, you know, it doesn't matter what sort of leader they ever were. It, it's like, because they make the money, they lead the teams, you know, it doesn't matter whether they're good or not, because they're usually not. Profession today. Just because you're making money, it does not make you a leader. And just because your check today is high, it doesn't mean that it's going to stay high tomorrow. True. Yes. Absolutely. So what is happening, right? Their revenue went through the roof. And this is where our leadership stayed. And Eric is teaching that our leadership can grow about 10% a year, right? A year over year. And I actually think that this particular year or last couple of years, it, it actually grew less because there was no need. There was no need for leadership, right? And first of all, as a profession, we in general had, you know, not necessary, we were not necessarily paying a lot of attention to build the leadership, right? Leadership by design. We always had leadership by accident. You know, some of you were... This in other words, means that they're not getting as many, like, training, but maybe, you know, like, they're still heaps of, you know, calls, trainings, etc. like, they, they're out there. They were doing it all. There were big teams, but maybe the revenue for them didn't increase as much as they thought it would because people were not necessarily paying for training, but they were paying for their kits and their PB and blah, 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 you know. Oh, it'd be interesting to see because Julie would have been in – Rank makers in that time. Hmm. Uh, it just sounds like she's complaining more than anything. Like, but it is good to have that reality check of you might not get the same check. Yeah, in fact, it may be going down. And I'm I would guess hunt. that most people at the moment are going down. You know, like people are starting to get the word out more and more about network marketing. So hmm, we know that Monate is going down. That's, that's just beautiful. Hungry, and you went and did it. And some of you found the coaches and mentors to learn from. Some of you went on the internet, found all the information you could possibly find, and educated yourself. And you became a leader by necessity. Most of you became leaders by necessity, either because you were starting and you really needed to make something happen, or you were sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you pushed out of different boundaries and through your fears and everything, and you became a leader. But most of that was not planned. Most of that was not necessary. The company says like, hey, let me groom you. Let me help you become a leader. Let me teach you and let me. Mm, I don't think many people use grooming like that anymore. I'm pretty sure that there's a big anti-grooming sentiment in the US at the moment. So, you know, I know what she means. She's not meaning it to be like that, but. Mm, interesting choice of words. Hold your hand and walk you step by step through the process. This is how you do this, this is how you do this, this is how you do this, and this is how you become a leader. That was not happening, right? So, and in the time when everybody's making money and thinking they're geniuses, nobody's thinking about building leadership either. So what continued to happen, more and more responsibilities came on to the same people. You continue to do the presentation for everybody. You continue to do lives for everybody. You continue to do all the recruiting and all the necessary training for everybody. And nobody else on your team learned the skills necessary so they can become independent. So they can go and build their own business, their own downline, their own teams. This didn't happen. So what inevitably going to happen next, right? 
the revenue is going to start flattening out. And all of a sudden, everybody's like, what's going on? What's going on? It's crisis. It's crisis. My check is the same. And God forbid, it's starting falling down. What is going on in the world? The world is on fire. Yes, the world is on fire in a certain way. But what was happening with your business is exactly the result of the negligence of leadership development. And, you know, Eric and I very... That's not the reason, really. Unless you want to say that leadership can be connected to manipulation and keeping people in because the reason was people realized what it was. People realized it was network marketing. Ooh, she looks like a book. Um, and they were like, I'm out now. I, I don't need this. I have a, a real job uh, that pays me for the actual hours that I work, you know, uh, yeah, it's got nothing to do with leadership except if it was some sort of like, like I said, like manipulation to keep people in. No. The the height of quarantining was over and people in non-essential jobs were going back to work. So, and the other alternative is they realised that it was a network marketing, multi-level multi -level marketing scheme and a scam and uh I don't get paid very much if I'm at the bottom of the rung you know yeah there's a lot of people who seem to ants oh my god I'm so sick of ants uh that you know like uh Veronica Bay and her sister's friend Bianca she was at college to become a doctor and she quit I don't know if she quit it but I think she is qualified, but she still just works for my name because she gets so much money. So there are a bunch of people who have that story, you know, like I was at college doing this, that, and the other, and I joined my network marketing company and, you know, that's what I do now. It's like it's not sustainable. It is not sustainable. Minnie, what are you doing? Minnie. Minnie. Minnie often because we work with a lot of leaders and we go and help companies sometimes and we have several coaching relationships with the companies when we work with the corporate leaders when we work with the ownership and we help them to understand what is happening how they can do better how they can work with the field how they can support the field how they can train the field how they can have leadership by design and not by the accident that's what we do and you know what happens most of the time when do you think the company calls us when everything is going great when, when everything is going down to shit when do you think it happens? They're calling us to catch the falling knife. And no matter how many times we tell them, it's like, guys, winter is coming. Winter is coming. Very rarely, when they're all making a lot of money, they're listening to this message. They all think they're geniuses. They all think they cracked the code. They all think that, you know what? They changed the history of network marketing for, forever and from, uh, from now on, and it's a straight line to the moon. But we know, we know nothing goes straight to the moon. They're going to be ups and downs. And our profession is no different than the world economy. Our profession is no different than any other business. They're going to be ups and they're going to be downs. And what was happening a lot is when the company goes straight to the moon, they don't care about us, they start calling us when things are going bad and they need a crisis, survival, army knife to help come and rescue them, right? And that's what Eric and I were doing. But we were doing it one company at a time here and there because they all were on their different stages, right? Some companies were going up, some companies were going down. Some companies were going up, some companies were going down. And the, as the entire profession, nobody felt anything different. But now, the biggest difference that we have today than it was before is the entire profession is doing this. The entire profession is going up, plateauing, and guess what's coming next? If we do not prepare ourselves and if we do not understand that the leadership development is the most critical part that we all need to focus on. Leadership development, and the biggest thing that we can do is, first of all, you becoming the leader that you were always meant to be. You becoming a leader that you have that fire, that you know you're capable, that you know that you got this. And, and what a coincidence that they sell leadership training. It's almost too perfect, isn't it? Coming so strong, so confident, so influential, so professional that you can educate your teams, that you can educate everybody else and help them to become the leaders they were meant to be. So, exactly. 
So this is what happened, and this is what we call a leadership gap, right? We need to fill up this gap as quickly as possible. And filling up this gap means that, like I said, we need to become the leaders that we were meant to be because what's going to happen, the income, the revenue, your checks, are going to start going down if we do not change. And like I said, I don't want to leave you in the downtime and say, okay, the event is over, bye, now you go do your thing, right? So we're going to give you skills necessary, we're going to give you tools necessary, we're going to give you the game plan. But before we do that, I want you to understand the importance. And I want to congratulate you for being smart, for being here today. Because while everybody is taking their time off, while everybody is enjoying their weekends, while everybody, I understand, now is the season of graduations and parties and all kinds of stuff. And guess what? There will be hundreds of other graduations and birthday parties and all kinds of stuff. But your life is more important. Your future is more important than anything else. And you dedicating the next three days, you dedicating those next three days for you. No one was clapping then. Uh, isn't that just a description of life? We've all got thing, other things to do. You becoming the leader that you were always meant to be is the most important task you have to do and the responsibility I take very seriously. So, like I said, we're all going through the times of change. And just like the world came through the entire workforce realization that we can work from home, just exactly the same way events changed, right? We are sitting right now in the Worry Studios, the largest in the world technical media company that was not planned to be. It was not that Eric and I said, I was like, you know what, let's start a whole new business, right? Let's become a media company. Let's create a venue that we're going to host events. No, it was not like that. I mean, it's like, I wish I can say I was that smart. But what happened is like it was out of the necessity because we had the event that we have every single year, just like we have the most powerful women in network marketing, we have the GoPro Recruiting Mastery. And a year in advance, we pre-sold 7,000 tickets, and like most of the world, Eric and I were crossing our fingers and hoping for the best, thinking that COVID going to be over by summer. By May for sure. By summer, 100%. 100%. And when we all started realizing, no, it's not. It's not going to be over by summer. It might not be over by the next year. And more likely, it's never going to be over. More likely, we will have to learn how to live with it. And this is exactly what is happening. As a society, as the world, we're learning how to live with things like pandemic and all kinds of stuff that is happening in the world, right? So this studio came out of as a solution because we had to do something. We had all of you coming to the GoPro event, but we couldn't leave you hanging, right? We had to come up with some idea, with some solution. And guess what? It was not easy. You know, it was not something that I can just snap my fingers. It's like, yeah, it's going to happen. And this is just going to be like the studio and we're going to have this and we're going to have that. I never done anything like this. Yes, I produced a lot of events for our company, but I never built a high tech company. I never built a high tech facility that has 20 plus million dollars of investment. The investment that Eric and I didn't have. Right. Thank you. So that pivot, that change that had to happen was absolutely necessary and realizing that we need to get out of our comfort zone. We need to get creative. We need to be solution oriented. And this is exactly where we need to be uh, as the society, as the profession. We need to understand that we are in a very pivotal moment as a profession, as the community, and as women in this community, in this profession. We need to recognize that, and first of all, give ourselves more credit. We need to give ourselves more credit because <laughs> Yes, give yourself a round of applause. And all of you at home, give yourselves a big round of applause. So we have to change. We have to be ready. And it's not going to be easy. I wish I can tell you, it's like, you know what? You're just going to snap your fingers, and tomorrow you're going to become a leader that you want to be. No, it's not. It just doesn't work like that. You will have to face your fears. You will have to get uncomfortable. You will have to go through the growing pain. I told you. You have to get uncomfortable to grow. Didn't I now? Okay, these are eggs. What I'm making now, okay, it's some green eggs. And what, what comes next? Ham. Uh, you know, this is what Rakan's done as well. He's done this. This. I don't think Rakan's thing is going to be this. Like, I don't think there's... 
I need for two different um, like studios like this, you know? Uh, I think it's it's interesting, but also, you know, like, yeah, they did it out of necessity because there's no way they wanted to refund that money, do you know? It wasn't about, uh, you know, doing the right thing for the customers. It was about, how can we do this and still make money? Because we like money uh, and we want money. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I don't think it was like, oh, this is going to, uh, you know, we need leaders. It's all about leadership. Uh, I think it's like everything in MLMs, it's about the money, 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 money. You will have to do all kinds of stuff and learn the new skill set and learn the new mindset because it's different. When you work for yourself, when you become a business owner, it's different. There's nobody here to drag you through the finish line. Yes, we put too much responsibility into our sponsors thinking that, oh yeah, it's their job to teach me everything. It's their job to make me successful. It's their job to go and talk to my prospects, to go and train my distributors. It's their job. Excuse me. I have heard nearly every single top leader in existence say, I will get on a three-way call. If you're not confident with calls, if you want to, you know, if you want to seal a deal, get your sponsor on the call, you know? Um, so, yeah, they, they do owe you that. And very often... You were promised that. So many down uplines say, you know, I'll be there through the whole process. It's we're in this together. And then as soon as they, you know, um, as soon as it's like not working, it's all on you. Well, you didn't do this and you didn't do that. And it's like, mm, I don't like this. Uh, I'm going to go check my dumplings. Dumplings, dumplings. What are you doing? Tell me. I don't know how long I've been recording for. One hour twenty six. Ooh, it's a bit long. All right, we got dumplings. I'm thinking I'm only going to be able to do her video because I've been recording for a while. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's your business and it's your job. They have their business. And their job to do. Yes, they are financially interested and motivated to help you, to help you learn, to help you grow, to help you make more money. That's how our compensation structure is built. But at the end of the day, nobody is going to force you to be who you need to be in order to be successful. Is network marketing simple? Yes or no? Yes, it is. It is a simple business. If you need to go to college, how many years it's going to take you to learn this business? Maybe one semester? Maybe two? It's not a rocket science. It's not the same as being a doctor. I'm sorry. Being a brain surgeon is way more complicated. But it's not easy. That's the difference. It's simple. It's simple to learn, but it's not easy to do. Because it's so simple. And because the price of entry is so low, the... No, it's not easy because of the way that the business is structured. In that the people at the top get money from the people down the bottom, you know? That's the problem, and it doesn't matter how small the investment is. Price of exit is, is low as well, because it costs almost nothing to join all of your companies. Sometimes it's absolutely free, and you get some products in return, and you can enjoy the products and services, and if you don't like it, you can even return them. And this is all of your financial commitment. You pay more money to go to the movies with your family than to join your business. So let people enjoy things. Look at this lady here. She's even got the bun. And we're both in red. Uh, so, yeah, I don't care. It doesn't, just because there's a low entry point doesn't mean that it's not a scam, you know? And that's why, that's why we don't value it. Run. That's why we are thinking like, yeah, it's some kind of like thing. You know, it's whatever project. It's whatever, you know, just homestay wives can do, right? And it's like serious business people are not interested in this. Yeah, it's not, it's not the case. It's business. 
It's a very serious business. And if you treat it seriously, you can generate serious income. And if you don't treat it seriously, don't, don't wonder why your check is not where you want it to be. Because you didn't learn the skills, you didn't learn the mindset, and you didn't do what it takes to make this business work. Ooh. Boom. Ba-boom. Uh, same old, same old. It's all on you. It's your fault. You're no victim. You're the victim. Don't, no, no. Don't, don't you dare. You're not allowed to victimize yourself. No, nope, it's not you. I mean, it's not the business. It's you. It's you. It is your fault. You didn't work it. Ugh. You know, I've heard this argument so many times and <laughs> it's almost like they're trying to convince themselves of this. Or, uh, you know, the top leaders, that's what it's there for. They know that it doesn't matter. They know how they get their money. So she does too. And this is awful to making people, to make people feel guilty for not succeeding. When 1% of people succeed, that is shitty. So the way I see it and the way I think is we all need to become badass and bulletproof. Absolutely. As the society, as the community, as the profession, and women in this profession, we need to become strong. And we need to raise strong generation physically, right? As women, that's what we do. But we also need to raise a next stronger generation of leaders inside of our companies. And as women, we know how to do that, right? As women, we know how to raise kids. And you know, um, not all women. I don't know how to raise kids. Uh, but I'm still a woman, and also not all women raise kids. So we are all made to be badass and bulletproof. I don't know. I just see that as, like, sort of like I'm – you can't pin me down for this. You know, like I'm thinking of, a, of the wider context of getting away with things, you know. It, it's like the MRA girls who say they're the sober rebels and it's like, I'm a badass. In other words, not in the positive way as far as I can see. Like, I'll, I, I've got, you know, like I will just go ahead and do stuff. It's not, you know, like I, I don't wait for permission. And then bulletproof, like meaning that, you know, you can't, you can't take me down. So it's interesting, the double meanings of that. Maybe you guys are, maybe the network marketers, the top leaders are. I don't know about everyone else, though. You know what's crazy? We think that network marketing is hard. Yes, it is kind of hard, but it's not harder than giving birth. It's not more painful. It's not more complicated. Raising kids, giving birth, that's hard. That's complicated. Network marketing is simple. You just have to learn the skills and you just have to go and do it. But for whatever reason, we... What? Why are we talking about these two things? Who, who's saying that network marketing is harder than... Like, it's a simple business. It's hard to succeed, though. That's all. I think that we're not meant for this. We're not capable. We're not deserving. We're not good enough. Please start thinking differently. Please start paying attention to yourself and please start loving yourself and giving yourself a credit because you are. Uh, is this a thought stopping moment? Maybe. Maybe. And you have to love yourself because you have to have that self validation because you get so little validation elsewhere, you know? Hmm. You are a badass. You are already a badass. And you already have everything that it takes. You just have to recognize the power that you have inside. You just have to nurture that power. You just have to allow that light to come out. You just need to become a better version of yourself. So this way, you can become that leader and you can help others to do the same. And I think in today's world, in today's economy, and what is happening around the globe, there are key elements that I think inside of our profession that will help us to become the badass and bulletproof. It's we need to increase our customers, right? And I would actually say quadruple. Quadruple the amount of customers that you have on your team. And you will see what's going to happen to your business. 
Because if before inside of network marketing, we were thinking like, yeah, who cares about customers, whatever, customers are not important, they just like byproduct of me recruiting somebody. At least that was the way when I was building the business, right? So I was, I'm a business oriented woman and I was looking for leaders and I was looking for people interested in the business. <laughs> just quadruple your customers. Just do that, everybody. That is ridiculous. That is a terrible tip. How? How? Because, like, I'm sure if you ask any one of those people, like, they're already trying to quadruple their customers. And where do where do your builders come from or where do your team come from? Usually from customers. So this is linked to recruiting too. But it's interesting that she said no one focuses on customers. You know, like, ah, oh, so you're telling us that, yeah, customers don't really matter. They matter when they could be recruited. And when you can just say something like, quadruple your customers. All right, see you later. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, how? How are we going to do that? Let's see if she tells us, hey? Business. And you want my buy, buy my product? Okay, that's fine. Buy my product, but you are not my focus. And today it's changing. The way we recruit is changing. We actually recruiting from our customers most of the time because they are the best because they already experienced some results with our product. I am very smart. They're already liking it what they see or what they experience or what they tried. And they're more likely to promote it to somebody else. So what needs to happen as a profession, we need to quadruple our customer base we need to triple our recruiting from that customer base. And guess what's going to happen as a result? As a result, our rank advancement is going to grow. We're going to double. Oh, we're going to go back to that terrible uh, graph that doesn't make any sense. Double our rank advancement as a result of bringing more raw material into our business, teaching them and learning them and uh, uh, teaching them and showing them how to become a business owner for themselves and helping them and putting them on the path of becoming a leader. So starting as a distributor, they can grow, and as a result, they're going to rank advance, right? But we all know none of that's going to matter if we lose the sight of who we are. No amount of fame, no amount of success or money is going to make you feel better. It's going to make you a happy woman, a happy wife, a happy mother. Once again, ridiculously rich, white, white passing woman, she's white saying that money doesn't make you happy. It's always these rich people who say money won't make you happy. Money doesn't matter. Blah, blah, blah. Well, give me yours then. I'll take it. No, money. Money is important. Money can improve your circumstances, which may lead to a happier life. Okay? If you don't have money, does that mean you can't have a happy life? No. But I'm just saying I'm sick of hearing it from these very rich people that doesn't matter because it fucking does, right? We still need to stay true to ourselves and we still need to remember that having harmonies ho at home is important and, you know, spending time with our kids and raising them into the human beings that we can be proud of and enjoy and looking forward to their successes that are coming for them, it takes time and it takes hard work. And that's why, especially at this event, we pay so much attention how we do this business as women, how we become badass and bulletproof and successful business tycoon and at the same time have great relationships with our spouses and at the same time raising amazing kids. Because guess what? You don't want to come to the beautiful mansion and just be there by yourself. That's not going to be fun. That's not going to be fulfilling. But inside of our profession and the model that we have, we actually can have it all. We can actually have amazing and prospering business and wonderful loving family and we're going to dedicate the next three days to show you how to do it from the business side how to grow your customer base how to grow your recruiting and how to rank advance and at the same time we're going to show you how to do it in a loving family and creating supportive uh, surrounding for yourself so you can be happy and fulfilled and happy in all different areas of your life all right who is excited about that put some fire in the comments <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna leave it there.
because it's a lot. Uh, so this sounds like, and this was, I think, May last year. This sounds like everything I've heard in all the Zooms and trainings in that year. <laughs> you know, it, it's like everybody just recycles the same information, the same phrases, the same everything, you know, and it's the same argument every time. It's, it would be boring in my opinion. Just just having the same platitudes, the same story, like Ray Higdon, you know, like he just tells the same stories over and over and over and over again. What a boring life. Like how can you be so fulfilled, you know? Amy from Alabama. Okay, I've got this, I hit that. I got this, I hit that. There's a play called A Long Day's Journey in Tonight. And it's one of my favorites. And it's an American classic as well. And in A Long Day's Journey in Tonight, it follows the story of a, an actor who plays the same role in a melodrama. So back in the day, melodramas were, uh, you know, the norm at the theatre. And you would play one character. Like, that's what you would do. There was no doing other plays. It, it, he would play the same character and it was very unfulfilling for him. And, you know, like, he was an alcoholic. I think he was an alcoholic. It's been a while since I've... You know, like, it, it was a very unfulfilling, and even though he was applauded and well-renowned for it, it just was an empty existence because it was like, you know, I, I'm pretending to be this person, and there's nothing else to me, you know? Hmm. Didn't mean to get so deep and philosophical, but here we go! See, I, I am smart. <laughs> Watch me say something dumb in a second, though. I'm only book smart. That's it. I got nothing else going for me. Oh, I got four dogs. It's pretty impressive to me. All right. Have a great week ahead. Two weeks to go for me, and then we have our Easter break. Wow. And, yeah, it's going to get cooler. I love the cold weather. Because we don't get it very much in Queensland. So I am pumped for cold weather and I'm pumped for the dentist on Tuesday. Because I've got my bottom teeth are finally getting fixed. So that's great. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, everybody. Take care. And please, please like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Uh, roasting next weekend. I'm not sure if we're still doing Holly Hillier because... Uh, the Clown Town did a Holly Hillio live a couple of days ago. Check it out. It's great. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be roasting someone and probably Boss Babe Bingo. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, everybody. And goodbye. Uh,